can thus move to the lecture. So first, so the first, I'd like to introduce the stereo camera. So we didn't introduce in uh, in lecture three because um, because we we have limited time on that. So um, stereo camera, stereo camera is the camera that we can observe that we can get the depth information uh, properly and naturally before we have the um, before we have the uh, RGBB uh, cameras. All right, so the stereo camera is mainly similar to the human eyes, as I, as I introduced before. As I introduced before, so uh, why we have two eyes? Because if you have only one eye, you can't you can't get the depth of the object. You can't get the distance of the object. But if you have two, if you have two, then you merely have the depth. And why we have that is I I I think I briefly mentioned it before, but I'm going to mention it here in mathematics about how to calculate the depth from a stereo camera. So you, after that, you will know how to do the translation. All right, so the stereo region or stereo camera is mainly similar to the, the human eyes or the, the, um, well, the animals have two eyes as well, right, to get the distance. And, um, and if you, um, I'm not 100% sure if, you know, if you know that or not. So if you look at the bottom right picture, this is the this is some kind of like very first 3D image we have. We have this is uh, in a in in the late in 1990s I think. So in that picture, you can see some kind of like two pictures overlay each other. All right, with some kind of like shift. Some kind of shift on the on the on the x and y sorry on the x direction, right? And it can you can roughly have you can roughly find that so one of the picture is mainly about red and the other the other picture is mainly about left. And then when you when you wear the uh, the, the glasses on the on the right, so there is a right a glass and um, uh, red glass and green glass on it. And when you wear on it. So it's some kind of like a filter, a filter for each of for each of your eye. So for your left eye, so there is a right glass, and then it will fit out the green one. So you only see the right image, so the, the, the right image. And um, for the right one, because it's is green, you can only see the green image. And then it's some kind of like for each of your eye, you can see a different image from the same image. Then, because there is some kind of like movement or the difference between the two images, and you can see the picture, which is 3D. That is some kind of like very initial, very initial like uh, stereo vision or the 3D vision. Right? And the, uh, the principle behind it is like similar. But later, we have such shutter glasses. So if you have a 3D screen, and you have a shutter glasses. If you wear it, then you can see a 3D vision from the screen. So I don't know if any of you have been um, have been to uh, uh, have been into the data arena. So in the data arena, it's like they have the similar techniques. They have the similar techniques. If you remember, when you get in, you need to wear a glass, wear glasses. Then that's the shutter glasses. Shutter glasses, and um, and the principle of this kind of like three D display is similar to what we have here. It's similar to what we have here. Again, for each of the uh, sorry the, for the display, they have two images. They have two images, and for each of the time, they only display one image. For example, they display the left image. When they display the left image, and then the shutter glasses will shut down your right glass, and then to make your left eye only see the left image. And then when it, when it displays the right image, the shutter glasses will shut off the left, the left glass, then it, to let you only see the right image on your right eye. And then the um, the left and right image is displayed uh, one one by one, one by each other. 
And then uh, in this kind of dis display, there are two things required. The first thing is it must re require a very high frame, frame rate of display. It's, it's, it's always about 120 hertz. And also the, the, shutter, uh, the shutter glasses, it need to be synchronized. It need to be synchronized to the display. And the principle is similar. To let your left eye to look at your left image, and to let your right eye to look at the right image, right? So the principle, these principles are similar. And um, because different eyes look at different images, and there are some kind of like differences or shift between them, then you can see the 3D, the 3D uh, view in the display. And there are some auto stereoscopic display, but it's um, it's quite uh, it's quite expensive, but it's like similar. They use some lens on the um, uh, on the screen to let your left eye look at um, only one, uh, only left image and right right eye on the um, right image. So it's like similar. It's like similar. It's not that it's not that um, um, commonly used uh, at the moment. So for the most commonly used and for the display, so the most uh, so the best display, the three D uh, display one is the shutter glasses. Uh, this is what we used in the uh, data arena. So next time, if you have chance to with the data arena, uh, then um, uh, have a feeling about um, have, about this kind of 3D display. Okay, so in the in the in the stereo vision, in the stereo vision, as we mentioned before, so the two cameras will get two different images, and two images are different. That's why we can calculate. We can calculate the uh, the distance, right? Because the same object projects on the left and right images are different. Then uh, we can calculate the distance, right? Then this kind of like difference in different images we call the disparity. We call the disparity. The disparity is the pixel difference in two images of the zero. We call the disparity. Then let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. So we have two objects. One is close to the uh, to the camera. The other is further to the camera, right? So which objects cause larger larger disparity? So the closer the so the closer object have the larger larger disparity, or the uh, or the further uh, project the object has a larger disparity. Think about it, think about it, think about it. Yeah, so the answer is um, if you have object close to the, uh, to the camera, it has a larger disparity. So which means larger disparity indicates that it have shorter, shorter depths or shorter distance. Or sm and smaller disparity will have, will have the longer longer distance or depth, all right? So keep this in mind, and you will find it out uh, correspondingly, correspondingly uh, if, um, uh, if we are doing the triangulation, all right? So keep these things in mind. So closer object will have larger disparity. So which means larger disparity means the shorter distance or shorter depth, all right? Then, um, for the disparity, we always use disparity map. So for each of the pixel, you can have a disparity, right? So if we can generate an image, and for each of the pixel, it represents the uh, it represents the gray scaled gray scaled gray scaled disparity. So that is a disparity map. So which means you have an image, you have an image. And for each of the pixels, so it's an intensity. And in that intensity is a grayscale disparity you have. And this is what we call disparity map. And from so for, for, for stereo vision, for stereo vision, the, the very last step before we have the because uh, before we have the depth reconstruction or punk cloud reconstruction is to recover the disparity map. And after the disparity, after you have the disparity map, you can recover a pond cloud, 
the point cloud or the 3D point of each of the pixel from the disparity map because you have disparity already. So which means the disparity map contains sufficient information about the depth image, right? So on the, on the, on the top right, there's a disparity map. And on the bottom right, there is a point, there's a point cloud recovered from that disparity map. All right, so that's disparity and disparity map in the, um, uh, uh, in the stereo vision. Then let's talk about 3D reconstruction, or we call the triangulation, call the triangulation. I mentioned it before in the first and second um, uh, lecture, but if you remember. So if suppose we only have Suppose, suppose we only have a, a, a single camera. Suppose we only have a single camera, then you have a point on the image. Then that point represents all the possible points on the ray. So which means from a single image, you can't, you can't recover the 3D position of that point because you don't have the depth information, because you don't have the depth information, right? So any single point, any single point on that ray will project on the same point on the PL, on the image, right? But, but if we have two images, if you have two images, for example, we have a, uh, a stereo camera, then from left image, we can, we, we will know the point is on that ray, right? And on the right image, if we observe the same point, the same 3D point on the image right, then we know that point also is also on that ray. And the intersection will be the 3D point P. That is triangulation, we call it triangulation. Because you have two images and you have two corresponding points which present the same projected from the same 3D point, then you can do this triangulation to find the intersection, intersection of that point. And that is the 3D point we want to get. Right? So that is the triangulation we call this 3D reconstruction. And how to do that? How to do that? So here we give the derivative. We give the derivative about the triangulation. We give the derivative about the triangulation. So if we consider, if we consider this projection, uh, the figure on the right, this projection, the P, the capital P is the 3D point, and PL is the is the point on the right image, on the left image, and PR is the point on the on the right image, right? And CL and CR are the uh, are the centers are the centers of the of the cameras. So each of each of each of the camera on the on the stereo camera. And and this this line is the image plane is the image plane. And here is the camera center. So which means this is the focal lens. This distance is the focal lens. Let me see if I can, no, no, okay, so, okay, so this is the focal lens, the distance between the camera center to the image, all right, then as we know, as we know, if we can see if we can see this large triangle and this small triangle, they are similar triangle because the uh, this angle is the same, right? And the, this is perpendicular to the x-axis, and this is perpendicular to the x-axis as well. Those those two those two triangles are similar triangles. All right, so in this, we can have this distance divided by this one is equal to this distance 
divided by this one, right? Divided by this one. Then let's see what are those. So for this distance is the focal length F, right? And this distance is the XL, so which is the projection, which is the location of the PL on image left, right, this XL. And this distance is the Z coordinate, Z coordinate of that 3D point P. And this distance, this distance is the, is the X, is the X coordinate, is the X coordinate of that 3D point P. All right, so, so from the first, two triangles, we can have F divided by XL is equal to Z, capital Z, divided by capital, capital X, right? And then we have the first one. And then we have the first equation here. And then we can have this, we can use a similar method to have the second one. So if you look at the image right. If you look at this together with this triangle, so there are similar triangles as well, right? So which means this direction, so this, uh, this direction divided by this one is equal to this divided by this, right? And this is focal length as well, and this is XR, which is projection on the right image, right? And, and, this is capital Z as well. And what is this? And what is this? We know from here to here, it is X, right? And it's a very good, it's a, it's a very important property of the stereo camera is the baseline. The baseline means the lens between the two camera centers. That's the baseline. You can, you can calibrate it out when you have a stereo camera. So this is no as well. So this distance is equal to the, this distance, which is X, minus this distance, which is the baseline, which is the distance between the two camera centers, right? So then we have the focal length F divided by XR, divided by XR is equal to the Z, capital Z, divided by x minus b, x minus baseline, right? So then from the two images, we have those two equations. We have two, those two equations. And from those two equations, from those two equations, we only have x and z, x and z, as the um, unknown, right? So if we solve the x from the first one, from the first from first one, and substitute into the second one, then we have an equation about how to calculate the z, which is the depth of the pixel. Uh, sorry, of the feature, three D feature. Right, so the capital Z is equal to baseline times I times F, which is the focal length, divided by XL minus XR. Right, and if you remember, what is XL minus XR? Which is the pixel differences between the two images, right? And that is the disparity. So which means distance or the depth is equal to the baseline times the focal length divided by the disparity. And that is the equation about how to calculate Z, right? And, and if you remember, if you remember, the larger disparity means the shorter, means the shorter depths, right? So here's the same because uh, the, the, the disparity is here. So the larger disparity D will cause a smaller, smaller Z. So which is the same, right? So this is the triangulation. This is the triangulation. 
Then after you calculate, after you calculate the capital Z, after you calculate the capital Z, then you can put the Z into here. And then you can calculate the capital X. You can calculate the capital X, uh, capital X, right? And about capital Y. So if you look at this this picture, this picture only consider the X Z axis, the X Z axis. But if you consider Y Z axis, the figure will be similar. And the equation will be the same as well. So here it will be y capital Y divided by capital Z is equal to the Y L divided by F. That will be similar to just replacing X by Y. Then after you have the capital Z, you can put that uh, you can put that into that equation to calculate the capital Y as well. Then you calculate X, Y, and Z already. That's the triangulation. That's the triangulation. All right, so any questions about triangulation? The triangulation is super important. It's super, it's super, super important because you are really commonly used as stereo camera. And when you use a stereo camera, then the, the meaning of using stereo camera is, got, is getting the depth of the, uh, of the pictures. And then uh, this is a way about how to do, how to recover the depth. That's the triangulation, how to, how to calculate the 3D location of the feature. All right? All good? Is it all good for this, for this triangulation? Any questions? Okay, so something I want to mention here, something I want to mention here. So if you look at, if you look at the XL and XR, they are, so the Z axis, if you remember, the Z axis is the camera axis. It's the camera axis. And this point is the principal point. It's the principal point. It's not the origin of the image. The origin of the image is on this side, right? So this is the Z axis of the camera, so which means this point is the uh, principal point. And what we always have for the UV values of the projection is with the with the uh, with the principal point offset. So which means if you have a point, if you have a point on the image which is 700 and 700, you need to delete you need to delay the principal point out to get your XL and YL. All right. So here is the activity. I don't think I have time to work on that. Uh, in the in the class, so please do it by yourself. Please do it. Please do it by yourself to let you know if you can solve this problem or not. This is quite important. Again, this triangulation is super super important. Make yourself know how to calculate the uh, the three D location of the picture. All right. So try to practice this activity by yourself after the class. All right. So, for example, if we have, uh, if we have a stereo camera has a principal point, have the principal point 400 and 300, and a baseline and focal length we have the ready. So the, the projections of that 3D point on the left image is 300, 300. The, um, the image on the, uh, sorry, the, the projection on the, on the right image is 200, 300. You are not using 300 and 200 as XL and XR in that, in that equation. You need to first delay the principal, principal point out from that UV values. So which means the first step, you need to use 300, 300 to, to, uh, and minus 400, 300 to get a minus 100 and zero. That is your XL and XR. So the XL is minus 100. And x uh, sorry the uh, the y l is zero right so for the for the uh, for the y l so for, so for the x r and y r is two hundred three hundred minus four hundred three hundred so which means your x r is is minus two hundred and your y r is zero all right so use those two as the input 
of here, of XL, XR here, right? So what I mean is XL and XR are not the UV values, are not the image coordinates. They are the image coordinate, the minus, minus the principal point. So here is the same. So use this point to minus the uh, principal point and you get your, your uh, XR, XL and YL. So use this coordinate minus principal point, you get XR and YR. And then use the XL, XR, uh, YL, YR to calculate the location of the 3D point in a camera corner frame. All right, so everything's clear? Everything's clear? All right, so this is homework. So do the, uh, act do the activity one by yourself to know if, the, um, uh, if you can do the translation or not. So if you, if you find any difficulties about um, doing this translation, please just let me know. The translation is very, very important. If you have any difficulties about that, please do let me know. All right, so I'm not doing it, uh, doing the activity one in this in the class, then let's uh, move a little bit forward. So about applications, the applications of stereo cameras uh, they use a lot because uh, if you remember the RGB camera, they have some issues about the distance, right? So their working distance are relatively short, but for camera, for camera, for each of the image, there's no limit about the distance. Right, so which means if you have a case which include a larger environment with longer distance, which uh, which the um, uh, which the um, the RGB camera cannot cover, then uh, maybe the stereo cameras are your better choices. All right. So the first um, the first application will be uh, is the the mapping on the on the on the airplane. So I. My PhD is in uh, photogrammetry and remote sensing, so I did a lot of projects doing a PhD about that. So we put cameras on the airplane or UAV, and then they take images of the ground, and then uh, we can do this kind of survey or 3D reconstruction of the terrain. This is what we did before. I think I, I showed you some of the results I have before. And um, some other applications is about the, uh, the Mars rover. So uh, when I attend my first iCar conference, I meet a guy from NASA JPL. If you, if you know JPL, is quite quite famous lab. So um, uh, they they did the uh, navigation. They did the navigation of the Mars rover, Mars rover, and they used their vision together with a satellite, and they they combined them to, together to do the guidance. And on the Mars rover, they definitely use a stereo, stereo camera on it. All right, and uh, wait a minute. yeah, there are some challenges or some issues about um, about stereo vision, about stereo vision. And the first one is about the color inconsistencies. So because you are using two cameras on the stereo camera, you can't make the two cameras exactly the same. That's the issue. So there must be some kind of like di differences between the two cameras. For example, the, the, the noise issues, the noise will be different. And also the illuminations, and the colors are different as well. I have the experience, I have the experience. Um, when I start doing, when I start doing robotics, uh, robotics during my PhD, I have a project which using a, um, a self-made stereo camera, stereo camera. I used two butterfly uh, butterfly cameras, and then I made a about one meter baseline of them, and then I do some kind of like um, uh, uh, calibration, and also uh, I test something on that as well. So it's it's on a detection of oh, detection of people on the on on the underground mining vehicle. So that that is the project. This ARC uh, linkage project. It's a very good project, and. Um, what I find is even I use two butterfly cameras, they, are, they have the same model number and I bought, it, I bought them at the same time. Suppose they, they are like quite close to each other. Then I find the uh, color, the color in different, um, in different cameras are different. 
they are different. And these kind of differences, I can't, I can't use SIFT feature to extract the matches. We can't use SIFT to get the cross bonuses. Even I use two same cameras. That's the thing. That's the thing. So what I did later is I I I do the uh, object detection from each of the images individually and then do the translation. This is what I did. So the, the, so that is one of the challenge or that one of the issue about stereo stereo camera. But if you buy a stereo camera together, you are not building a stereo camera. If you if you buy a, a stereo camera, and they made it together, they may adjust. Let me adjust the uh, the cameras to make it as perfect as possible. All right, so uh, that's one of the challenges. The other challenge is you sometimes you can't see you can't see the object you can't see the object with textures. All right, for example, uh, if you have a wall or something, so there is um, there are no features on that. So you can't get the correspondences. You can't get correspondences. Right. So the triangulation is based on the correspondences. So for, from the two from the two images, you can observe the same point on on the two images. And then you can do the triangulation, but you can't get the feature. You can't get exception. Then you can't do that. So in this case, in this case, if you can see the bottom images, they are so the um, the structure light can do it quite well. So that is why we have the RGBD cameras. Because RGB cameras, uh, you you do need to you do need to care too much about the uh, uh, too much about the um, uh, about the, the textures. Wait a minute. Okay, so uh, this. This lecture, so this this lecture is about triangulation is uh, is in lecture three, it's in lecture three, and then uh, I will also put uh, this video on the uh, uh, on the test online as well. All right, okay. So let's get let's get back to the um, let's get back to the, to the lecture. So that's why that's why we are having uh, uh, RGBD sensors because um, it is more robust. It's more robust about the uh, extra extra less reason. All right, and um, okay. So um, another challenge is about um, is about you can't sometimes you can't see the features in the two images, right? Because you're viewing on different angles, there will be occlusions on the features, and in this case, you can't recover you can't recover the three D three D location of that feature. That is another. That is another another issue. Another problems about stereo about stereo cameras, and that's why that's why we have our RGB cameras. So we've uh, introduced RGB cameras as well. So um, uh, so uh, if you um, uh, if you are interested in uh, in the stereo camera and also the RGB camera, so please go back to the uh, to the lectures and also. Uh, and also, there are some hand activities you can, you can work with. All right. So that is the second part of this lecture, which is about the art, uh, which is about the stereo camera. Um,